Welcome to Past People. To support my channel, please consider subscribing. Welcome to part two on the tumultuous life of King George IV. Delve into the intricate tapestry of King George IV's personal life, where unconventional choices and tumultuous relationships marked the reign of this enigmatic monarch. From his preference for older mistresses, political distrust and familial tragedies to the controversies surrounding his coronation, George IV's journey unfolds as a riveting saga of passion, power and unprecedented drama. In the realm of mistresses, George IV undeniably had a preference, mature women. Maria Fitzherbert was a woman of maturity, yet she paled in comparison to George's other paramour. Frances Villiers was 40 and already a grandmother when George initiated an affair with her in his early 30s. In fact, most of George's mistresses were witty, charismatic women many years his senior. Prince George struggled to navigate his love life, mirroring the chaos in his political realm. With King George III's escalating mental illness, Parliament advocated for Prince George to assume the role of regent as early as 1788, when he was still in his 20s. However, for some reason, most members of Parliament mistrusted the royal rake and his ascent to power only occurred amid great tragedy. In 1810, a devastating blow struck the royal family. Prince George's younger sister, Amelia, succumbed at the age of 27. She had been King George III's beloved daughter and her demise plunged him into melancholy beyond description. Heartbreakingly, it also marked the final stage of the King's debilitating mental illness. At that point, Parliament had no alternative but to appoint his son as regent. Predictably, the tumultuous relationship between Caroline and Prince George faltered after the birth of their obligatory heir, Princess Charlotte. However, George's ordeal was only beginning. To his surprise, Caroline garnered significant public favour, and when news of their marital woes reached the press, they portrayed her as a wronged wife, which in many respects she was. But after that, all pretenses were abandoned. The brief period during which Caroline and George coexisted felt like an eternity of ceaseless torment. Frances Villiers, George's current mistress, took her role as Lady of the Bedchamber quite seriously. She delved into Caroline's private correspondence and aided George in exerting control over his new wife. The prince went so far as to deny Caroline the freedom to travel without his permission. And matters were about to take a darker turn. By 1797, Caroline had established a separate residence far from George until scandal erupted. Whispers circulated that the king's wife was entertaining gentlemen callers during her newfound independence, prompting Parliament to launch the infamous delicate investigation into her private affairs. The findings were far from delicate. George immersed himself in the creme de la creme of English society, treating leisure with a gravity akin to an actual occupation, which it wasn't. Under his regency and reign, the concept of a seaside vacation gained prominence, thanks in part to George IV constructing his own seaside spa and palace in the Brighton Pavilion. Although the delicate investigation failed to conclusively prove anything against Caroline, it unearthed a trove of damning information, including suggestions of a secret love child born during her time apart from George. This provided George with ample ammunition for a ruthless retaliation. Consequently, he restricted Caroline's access to her daughter, Charlotte, to once-a-week visits. Why didn't Prince George follow in the footsteps of King Henry VIII and seek a divorce from Caroline? Well, he certainly tried. However, being just as culpable as her in matters of infidelity, any divorce proceedings would inevitably expose his own indiscretions. Despite attempting to push through a bill allowing him to separate from Caroline without investigation, it crashed and burned due to the widespread disdain from Parliament. Prince George associated with the most sophisticated circles during the Regency period, 
including the renowned dandy Boo Brummel, possessing a razor-sharp wit and an even sharper tailor. The vivacious Brummel played a pivotal role in keeping the Prince Regent at the forefront of both fashion and revelry. However, the camaraderie eventually soured. During a ball, the Prince Regent, in a fit of pique, chose to ignore Brummel cruelly. In retaliation, Brummel elevated the snub to new heights. Right in George's presence, the dandy turned to a companion and rudely remarked, Who's your fat friend? This marked the end of their once warm-hearted and congenial friendship. In 1820, after the passing of Mad King George, Prince George ascended to the throne at the age of 57. It was his moment to shine, and he spared no expense to his opulent coronation. Describing it as lavish falls short, Party George's grand celebration incurred a cost 20 times higher than his father's coronation, which was also a staggering 10,000 British pounds. Small wonder why the American colonies grew so resentful of taxes. Credit where it's due, George IV possessed exquisite taste, albeit ruinously expensive. For his coronation, he insisted that all attendees don old-timey Tudor and Stuart period attire, even commissioning his own decadent red velvet gown. It became a resounding success, used in every coronation since George V. However, his special day was not without its share of high drama. George IV's pettiness knew no bounds, and he adamantly excluded Caroline from the coronation. When she returned to London to assert her rights as consort, George inflicted a cruel blow. Caroline reached the doors of Westminster Abbey, only to be met by guards brandishing bayonets under the Queen's chin before slamming the door shut, and the ordeal didn't end there. To compound Caroline's royal humiliation, King George IV issued an official decree to expunge her name from the common book of prayer at the coronation ceremony. To George, this lightly felt like the culmination of his petty revenge against Caroline. Little did he know what lay ahead. Despite the persistent allegations of infidelity shadowing Caroline of Brunswick, she asserted that she had committed adultery only once in her life, with the husband of Mrs Fitzherbert, the king. Caroline wasn't holding back. Join me for part three where in this segment we explore Queen Caroline's distressing decline post-coronation, her persistent claims of poisoning that echoed through society, and King George IV's concealed struggle with drug addiction. The monarch's later years are marred by debilitating health issues, an insatiable appetite during his final days, and an undignified demise marked by a ruptured blood vessel. The narrative also touches upon the heartbreaking response to his death, the horrific neglect of Princess Charlotte's passing, and the disturbing legacy of George IV left through his final will. Join us as we navigate through the complexities of his reign, revealing the inherited turmoil that defied his legacy. 